Hello, this is my daughter's uh, 2008 Toyota Prius and she's been having a problem lately with the uh, check engine light. It comes on and then it goes off by itself and then a few weeks later it comes on again and it goes off by itself. So I used my um, Centac which I bought at uh, Harbor Freight, the OBD2 uh, scanner and um, I connected it to the uh, to the port which is right right below the dash down here below the uh, the steering wheel and when I read the code it is reading on 1121 uh, it's hard to read with the backlighting here but there it is 1121 now interesting when you pull up the Toyota uh, database on this on this uh, unit here it says accelerator pedal position sensor range slash performance problem so just to double check I went on the internet and apparently this is not the actual code that's um, that's associated. I'm sorry, it's not the actual description that's associated with the P1121 code. So let me show you what the internet says about that. So as I said, I went on the internet and um, I looked up uh, 1121 for Toyota Prius, and there's an actual uh, technical service bulletin from Toyota that was published in 2005, I guess that was the early version, and it specifically states that 1121 has to do with the coolant flow control valve position sensor stuck. Um, so anyways, they have this new part, and the part number is 16670-21010, and this is what the thing looks like right here. Uh, there's three hoses that are attached to here, here, and here. And the way to access this is from underneath the car. And we're going to show you how to, how to how to replace that. This valve, uh, this this pump here, um, control valve, I should say, cost me um, fifty-six dollars and nine cents plus shipping. So it came out a total of uh, sixty-seven dollars and eighteen cents. Uh, I understand from a number of uh, forum uh, discussions that uh, if you take your car to the dealer and ask them to change this part uh, they're going to alleviate five hundred dollars from your wallet so um, I figure I give it a go and uh, we'll, we'll walk you through it and show you how, how it's done okay so that um, coolant flow control valve is um, kind of mid uh, stream if you will on the engine bay so we're gonna have to access from the top as well as from the bottom and the best thing to do is we're gonna take this plastic cover off and it looks like there's what one two three four five six of these uh, uh, snaps that hold them in place and then we're gonna be able to access at least view the part from the top and uh, there's two hoses on the top and there's one on the bottom there's also an electrical connection that has to be disconnected and it will probably be easier from the top. So let me take that off and uh, we'll get back to you. So these guys here, apparently all you do is you turn a quarter of a turn and then with a small screwdriver you just pop it up and it, it comes right off like that. Okay, so here it is in real time. So you just go underneath like this and you t get your Phillips screwdriver and you just turn a quarter of a turn and you can actually feel it and then it comes right off just like that there's no pressure required or anything so let's do one more over here so you pry it from underneath then with the screwdriver you turn a quarter of a turn you can see how it, it naturally comes up and then you just just like that so again no pressure required at all okay so we've taken out that plastic cover okay and you can actually see the valve right here okay there's one hose right here there's a second hose underneath there and there's the electrical connection uh, connector that we have to remove and then there's one more hose that we're going to get from underneath but uh, one very important uh, instruction that they said on the uh, on the uh, Toyota service bulletin is be sure to mark at least the top hose so there was already a yellow dot but we put a nice white uh, mark right there because uh, you don't want to get those hoses mixed up. In other words, you want to put the top hose on the top and the bottom hose on the bottom and not vice versa. So, um, uh, they, they also recommend that if, if you know, you're going to change the, the uh, inverter uh, coolant fluid, 
to drain the system, uh, our inverter coolant fluid doesn't have that many miles on it and it looks fairly clean so we're going to keep that. In order to minimize any uh, spillage what we're going to do is we're going to actually pinch these hoses with some mechanical gizmos so that we don't have to drain the system. Um, haven't tried that yet, we're going to give it a go and see how that works but it should minimize um, any spillage and uh, and the reason is that it's apparently a pain in the rear end to burp the system uh, from all the the air that gets uh, collected once once you drain the uh, the coolant. So apparently it's a very tedious process where you have to fill it up and then you have to start the car, get it up, the, the thermostat to open, circulate the fluid, and then add some more. And apparently it takes about two to three hours if you do it normally. So in order to prevent that, we're gonna. As I said, we're going to clip the hoses, uh, I'm sorry, pinch the hoses and uh, try to maintain as much fluid in the lines as possible. Okay, so this uh, electrical connector was kind of a pain to get it out, but basically you have, there's a tab right here that you have to push it in and then you just raise the connector and it, uh, it uh, comes right out. But it does take a little bit of fiddling, but with a small screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver, you press the tab in and you pull it up and it comes right out. Okay so here's the uh, hose pinchers that I got from uh, Pep Boys. It's about seven dollars for a pair and um, there is one of them right there. The top hose has been pinched and we're gonna put a pan underneath to catch any uh, fluid that comes out and then we're gonna remove the top one. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom hose. I'm sorry, the middle hose, and then there's a final bottom one that we're going to get from the bottom of the car. Okay, there are two bolts that hold the bracket that hold that uh, coolant pump on. One of them is right there by the end of that socket. That's, that's a 12 millimeter. And then there's one on the side right down there, which it looks like it's a 10 millimeter. So we're going to take those guys off this before we remove any of the hoses. This way, if it starts leaking real bad, uh, with the hoses that are now, both of them here are pinched, um, we should be able to put the new ones on right away. Well, here's the result of the pinching. I guess it did not work at all. Um, I have all three hoses pinched and I pulled the bottom hose off and it is draining. So I guess I'm going to uh, reuse this fluid and we're going to have to go to the flushing of the air on the lines uh, the hard way. Okay so all the hoses have been disconnected the system has been drained and uh, the pump you can see the, the bottom hose sticking out there and the valve comes out from the bottom there's no way it's going to come out from the top here so we're going to jack up the car and uh, take it from the bottom. Yeah so here's the old valve and sure enough it didn't have to come from the bottom and one telltale sign that indeed this valve was bad is you can't, you can hardly see it, but that there should be a, a, a wide opening right there. Right now it's partially open and partially closed. And the same thing happens on the bottom. You can see that there it's partially, um, partially open. So that's, that's not a good thing. The new valve, it's a nice big uh, opening right there. So, um, so we've drained now. Uh, all the fluids out and uh, we put the new valve up there and Steve is going to shine a little bit of light over here so we can see what the heck is going on. There it is. And we've attached the, um, the bottom hose already and we're going to put the clamp on there. And then uh, we're done on the bottom then we'll do the same thing on the top. Alright, so as you can see we're filtering the coolant. Um, that uh, container was pretty clean to begin with but just as a safety measure. We're going to filter the coolant before we put it back into the radiator. And there's the radiator uh, filler cap, uh, filler hose right there. And we just finished putting uh, the two uh, hoses, the top hoses back on. And the clamp we got secured. And the last bit that we have to do is we'll have to put the electrical connection back on. And, and there it is. It just snapped into place. So, um, before I put this top cover back on, we're going to fill it up and start the car and 
There's a special mode called the inspection mode and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes where basically we're going to force the gasoline engine to be on at all times. This way uh, when we start up the car uh, and put the heat on max, uh, it's going to heat up the engine a lot faster and the coolant is going to flow through the system. And as I said, we're going to have to burp the air out of the system. So. Uh, but as I said, prior to putting this top uh, plastic uh, cover back on, we're going to fill it up and start and make sure there's no leaks from up here, and then we can button this thing up. Okay, so here's one trick that uh, we learned. There's a hose right here. If you disconnect this hose, okay, and just pull it, you squeeze the clamp and we push the hose down, then that will act as a bleeder for the engine block, and basically, um, as you can see, we got most at that one gallon in there, and there was a lot of air coming out from that hose. Uh, but now the system is pretty full, so there's another bleeder valve that's actually right over here. This is on the right side of the car here, as we're facing the car. And apparently it's a six millimeter Allen that we have to use in there. And there's a little spigot that you connect the hose to, and that's the bleeder valve. So uh, that's going to allow us to fill the remaining. Uh, that's where the coolant comes. The coolant, yeah. So there it is. He's attaching this little stub to that spigot, and then we're going to loosen that uh, six millimeter uh, bleeder right there, and then we're going to uh, fill it up. Okay, so we're going to put the car in. It's called the inspection mode. Okay, so here we go. You have to put the key into the slot, and with your foot off the brake, okay, you're going to push the power button twice. So there's one time, you let the screen come up for one second here, and then you press it again a second time. Okay, now you got, with your left foot, you're going to press and hold the brake. Okay, you're going to press the accelerator to the floor twice. One, two. Now you're going to put the car in neutral, okay, which is right there. You're going to press the accelerator button, uh, accelerator pedal twice again. One, two. You're going to put it in park. Okay. You're going to press the accelerator twice again. One, two. Okay. Now it's going to say problem here, and then just go ahead. Your foot is still on the brake. Turn the unit on. And there it is. See the special triangle right there with the car with the bank sign. It's basically telling you do not drive the car because the transmission is in a special mode. So now the engine is on and you stay on. And if you notice on the climate control, I have set it to max or high, I should say. And uh, we're going to let the, the engine warm up and the thermostat should open up and circulate the, the coolant through and get all the air out of the system. Okay, so we checked for uh, leaks and there are none. So we put this cover back on and we just finished shutting down the car for its first warming cycle so now we're going to let it cool off again so the water I'm sorry the coolant percolates through the system and then we're going to do the same thing again and that, that's about it I mean we put it back all the coolant that we took out um, so we shouldn't need any more but we're going to go through a couple more heating and cooling cycles to make sure that it doesn't require any additional ones so as you can see it was a pretty straightforward job it is hard to get uh, those those hose clamps so it does take a bit of fiddling and some uh, some patience but they do come off and um, you know you save yourself uh, quite a bit of money okay so that's about it